G'day guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Sean and today, as the title suggests for this video, we're looking at this wicked fast SSD from Crucial. This is the T700. It's a Gen 5 NVMe SSD drive and this one is actually in a two terabyte capacity. So what I'm gonna do today is put it in my own personal system, share with you guys the steps on how to do that in case you wanna go ahead and do it for yourself, for your next PC maybe, and also share with you guys the benchmarks on going from a Gen 4 drive to a Gen 5 and why a Gen 5 drive is going to be really, really important if you're into playing games for the future. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to chuck it a like, get subscribed, and let's begin. So starting off with the installation, you obviously are going to need your SSD and you want to pay extra special attention to those gold pins, those gold connectors, because if you damage those, it's pretty much game over. Then you're going to need a PH1 Phillips head screwdriver, preferably if you've got one that's magnetic, that will definitely make your job a lot easier. Once you've got your screwdriver and you've got your PH1 Phillips head, attached then you're going to need to locate the m.2 screw that came in your motherboard box you can buy these after the fact but this m.2 screw is specifically made to go into the m.2 slot on your motherboard and because it is such a small tiny little screw having that magnetic tip on the screwdriver is going to make the whole process much much easier so when it comes to installation, the first thing you need to do is find that Gen 5 M.2 slot on your motherboard. You might need to look at your motherboard's manual, but generally speaking, it's the one above your graphic card, the one closest to your CPU. Once you've found it, grab your SSD and insert it on a 45 degree angle, roughly, as you can see here, be careful with those pins. And then with the other hand, grab your screwdriver, your M.2 screw, and you can see here, one hand pushing down on the SSD, the other hand putting in that M.2 screw, and two turning it clockwise to secure it in place so it doesn't move. Take your time with it though, because if you do damage those pins or slip and damage the motherboard, it's pretty much game over and it's a very sad day. So very easy to do, but just take your time with it. So starting off with Crystal Disk Mark, if you haven't heard of it, it's a really popular benchmark. You can download it for free and install it on your own personal system. And I recommend that you do that because it'll give you some appreciation and some context for just how fast this drive is and how fast it can potentially go. So it does a couple different tests, but the main thing that I'll sort of explain to keep it simple is you've got these sequential tests and then you've got these random 4k the way that i want you to think about it is the speed on sequential is essentially basically how fast the drive can go getting really big chunks of data at a time and then moving it into a big location so an example would be like a video file and then the random 4k would be like grabbing tiny little bits so like word documents or maybe mp3s or something like that which is a little bit harder to do you know imagine you've got a shovel and you're trying to pick up an m&m it's quite difficult so you can't necessarily go as fast compared to when you might be be digging for like a big pile of dirt i hope that makes sense so for the sequential reads the theoretical max speed that we got was 12 gigabytes a second or 12.1, which is just absolutely insane and exactly what is expected on the box and what is advertised. So that's really, really good. And then on the right, we've got 11 and a half gigabytes a second. So if you're someone who's working with big files all the time, you're definitely going to appreciate just how fast this drive is. But then even with the random 4K numbers, which is a little bit more challenging for SSDs and hard drives, we've still got really respectable numbers of over 713 megabytes a second on the read, 531 on the write, and then worst case scenario, you're getting 84 meg on the read and 285 on the write, which is again, really, really impressive. Run it on your own hard drive and SSD, because I think you'll really appreciate just how quick this drive is. Now, in terms of temperatures because it does have a heat sink on there suggesting that it might get a bit toasty you can see here with hardware monitor we reached a maximum temperature of 80 degrees celsius which is actually within spec it's actually okay despite this red alert that we're getting here from crystal disk info but the minimum temperature just when you're idling just doing your normal day-to-day -day, was about 50 degrees celsius that's what i recorded and absolutely fine so this was with my own personal pc remember with a 7800x 3d cpu you and then an N7B650E motherboard from NZXT. This is a Windows 11 installation. It's fresh. There's absolutely nothing on it. All the drivers are done. All the updates are done. And this is basically best case scenario with these numbers. 
as the drive fills up, you're not necessarily going to always get these numbers, but it's still going to perform, especially in short bursts, really, really well. Now, when you take these numbers and you compare it to a Gen 4 SSD, so last gen, you're still getting some pretty respectable numbers. So almost seven gigabytes a second on the read, five gigabytes a second on the write. So definitely respectable, no slouch. This is from our P5 plus one terabyte. The random 4K numbers pretty similar to what we've got with Gen 5, but still definitely slower. So if you are someone who is, again, working with really big file types um, and big file sizes, a Gen 5 drive you're going to see some benefit for sure then if you jump to like a gen 3 a gen 3 drive you know you're getting much worse performance again and i say worse loosely because still three and a half gigs a second is still very very quick and you know three gigs a second on the right is still very quick but when you're wanting to move big files from one folder to another or you're duplicating or you're working in Premiere or DaVinci or whatever it might be and you want to be able to make sure that you're scrubbing through a timeline or moving around big assets, big textures, whatever it might be, um, you're going to reach a bottleneck at some point. So definitely going from a Gen 3 to a Gen 4 and then to a Gen 5 drive, you're going to see huge improvements. Now, like I mentioned before, depending on the file size or the folder size or the program that you're working with or the kind of CPU that you have, like there's so many different variables that can actually impact how fast something can copy from one place to another. But what I thought would be really interesting to do so you can see it actually happen in the real world, like we're doing some screen capture at the moment. This is a folder with 101 gigabytes worth of data. So there's 396 files and seven folders. This is actually from a project that I did. Um, it's got a bunch of different B-roll and video files from you know, stuff that I shot on my camera. So you can see it all here. And what we're gonna do is just simply copy it from folder one and put it into folder two and see how quick it goes. So you can see here, we're roughly copying at about 2.8, almost three gigabytes a second. So 100 gigabytes, literally moving it nowhere, just duplicating it. This is the speed that I'm getting on the drive. And I've personally never seen data move around and duplicate itself so quick. So again, this might not be something that you do all the time, like duplicating files isn't something that a lot of us do, but if you are working with assets or big textures, like you're a game developer or you're an engineer and you're working with, you know, scientific um, data that you might need to replicate or, you know, ingest into a program or whatever it might be, the fact that you can go ahead and essentially copy 100 gig in 30 seconds is pretty freaking incredible. So you now know going from Gen 3 to Gen 4 to Gen 5, you're going to get these huge performance improvements in terms of throughput, how quick you can copy files, read them, load them into programs, whatever it is that you do. But I mentioned at the start of this video why Gen 5 is going to be really important for the future, especially if you're a gamer. If you're a gamer, you might have heard of this thing called Direct Storage from Microsoft. It's an SDK which is actually being made public now to developers. Specifically, game developers is who they're targeting and what direct storage does and why it's so important is it lets your graphic card have direct access to the assets that are sitting on the SSD for decompression. So why that's important is in a game, for example, like Minecraft or maybe The Witcher, where you've got these huge worlds, these huge landscapes full of all these textures, one thing that can really suck when you're jumping around is when you're waiting for things to load in. And that's because basically the SSD passes off those files to the RAM and then your CPU has to decompress it and then send it back to the graphic card. So you've got kind of this, um, I don't know, you've got these bottlenecks along the way. Direct storage lets game developers make the game in a way where the graphic card can actually get direct access to the files on the SSD because the SSD is now so so quick and it can actually really improve the performance when you are loading those textures or loading worlds and you see with even games like Call of Duty Warzone where the maps are just absolutely massive why this can be a huge benefit. 
So if you are considering your next SSD or maybe you're planning your next PC build, I definitely would recommend getting yourself or at least checking out the Gen 5 SSDs that are out there like this one from Crucial because as this direct storage technology becomes more popular with game developers and you start to see it talked about a bit more in the communities, I'm sure games like Call of Duty Warzone and Fortnite and Apex Legends and The Witcher and whatever else is out there that requires really amazing textures to load very, very very quickly like Minecraft is another one that pops into my mind having a gen 5 drive is definitely going to help with your performance in terms of FPS your frame times in terms of like latency making sure that things are actually loading as expected so thanks to Crucial for sending over this drive I'm going to definitely be leaving it in my own personal system it's definitely the fastest SSD that I've ever used um, and I guess we'll just have to wait until like gen 6 and see what happens there but I don't think that's going to be happening anytime soon so thanks for watching guys if you have any comments or questions hit me up down in the comment section uh, links to everything that I've talked about down there as well all the links to the different articles and stuff um, get subscribed come follow me on social media join my discord and I'll see you guys in the next one cheers